This book right here, I'm going to hold it up, it's called A Picture History of New Bedford, Volume 2. We can get a good look at the old Kushna Avenue right there. But this book, Joe, i got to tell you, this came out fantastic. This is just a fantastic Thanks book. So you got to be satisfied with it, right? It was a lot of fun to do. It was a blast to really put together. We worked hard. We had a great team. But just getting lost in history, you know, just immersing yourself in these old photos. A lot of stuff on the textile industry because that was big here in New Bedford, a big mill town. Yeah, well, 1925 really was the peak period of both in production and in the labor of the uh, textile industry. There were uh, 35,000 people working in textiles. There were 125 to 30,000 people, uh, residents in New Bedford. So the population had peaked, and one out of every four people was a textile worker. It, uh, we begin with the events. Uh, each chapter begins with a series of events that we thought were, you know, watershed events for that period. And in that early, those early decades of, in the 20s and 30s, of course, you had, uh, you had the strike of 28, but then the Depression, the Great Depression came. Rum running, you know, prohibition was a, was a big deal. There are intersections, right? You can see the Cogsall Street up a Cushion Avenue. You can recognize the whole street. Then there's other sections where block after block after block doesn't even exist because yeah. of the highways in Route 18. Yeah, yeah Route, uh, the building that of Route 195 and, and 18 took up about 200 city blocks when right. you take it down all the way to the south end. Yeah, right. Uh, it's a tremendous uh, gutting took place in the 1960s and 70s. But prior to that, I mean, really, the city had been built uh, north of, of Cogsall Street, you know, after the after 1900, primarily. And uh, it was new for all those decades, and then it just sort of, then the city kind of had a period of uh, non-growth. Right, and so many times I've heard my dad talk about a Kushner Park. Now, I remember Lincoln Park. Don't remember a Kushner yeah. Park, but he described this park. Hey, it was this great place. It was down near East Beach, and they had the roller coaster in a pavilion, yeah. and he talked about it dozens of times. Yeah. I don't and remember until I got your <laughs> Until I got your book... I never saw a picture of it before, and then when I actually saw the picture, I was like, wow, this is what I've been hearing about. What a great place down by East Beach. Yeah, Dance Pavilion was on the beach, and it it really was a beautiful place. And the hurricane is really what killed it, right? Three hurricanes, yeah. I think you have a picture in there called City at Night, and you're kind of looking at the picture, and it really had a beautiful elegance to it when you go back to those years. You know, yeah, it was a small city. It looks like it came out of that uh, wonderful life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or, right, exactly. You know, Bedford Falls. It looks yeah, like Bedford I Falls. Mean, theaters, <laughs> banks, you know, well, you have, apothecaries. You have a number of pictures of the different theaters. Now, obviously, we have the Zyterian Theater here. Very successful. I mean, we all go to the yeah. Zyterian all the time. They're getting great acts over there at the Zyterian the last few years. So it's a lot of fun for a city this size to have a, a performing arts theater. But, of course, you look back in the olden days before television, before 100 uh, channels and 500 channels of cable and everything else, you had theaters all over the place. The Olympia was the most beautiful role. The Olympia was the biggest. (laughs) It it held over, uh, I think it was close to over 2,000. Yeah. There were over 2,000 people. Now, it had a balcony, presidential boxes, you know, those uh, (laughs) executive boxes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was just a nice theater. It really had no business taking that theater down. Another thing that my dad mentioned to me is uh, when Franklin Roosevelt came to New Bedford. Franklin Roosevelt came to New Bedford um, and was in a parade. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower was also in a parade, I think when he was still a general. And you see a picture of him going down Union Street. And all of the surroundings on Union Street, you can recognize that it looks just like it does today. Well, he was running for president in that picture. and Eisenhower was? Yeah. So was this I like Ike thing and all that? Yeah, Yeah. well, he was beloved. You know, he was a a general, you know, the the war years. Right, they won, of course. Yeah, and because New Bedford had a a lot of people serving in the war. We had a a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, group of uh, soldiers here. I mean, uh, the the numbers, you know, we had um, the representation that we had in the wars was very big. But the pictures that I find the most fascinating are the ones where you can still recognize it today, and you're looking at a picture and saying, this picture was taken in 1940. And then there are other pictures, even as back 1925, and I'm looking at the street, and I'm like, I recognize that street now. That's 100 years, almost 100 years ago. So that's a lot of fun to look at that. You know the cover... uh, Here's the cover right here. Yeah, the... The uh, (laughs) That's interesting because... That's a Christian Avenue. You see in the distance there, a lot of those buildings 
uh, on on Sawyer Street, you know Bentley Street. Right. And if, you go, if you go to the end of Route 18, it, it looks just like that. It does. Yeah. But but the photographer is in a building on uh, Marvin Street in the corner of Marvin and Cushion Avenue. Look, and he's looking north. But Marvin Street doesn't exist. I was going to say, where's Marvin Street? Yeah, Marvin's <laughs> completely gone. Going anywhere. Well, when they first put in, and we're going to get to Route 18. Of course, we're, we're bouncing around, but. I think one of the politicians called it a road to nowhere, wasn't it? Yeah. Because <laughs> they were criticizing the road. A lot of people call that, yeah. And it's funny, like, I, I mean, now, I mean, I work in downtown New Bedford. My law office is in downtown New Bedford. I kind of got used to, you know, you come down the highway, you go right down Route 18, right into downtown. Yeah. I, I, I kind of like Route 18 in a way now, but now that it's already there, but you can see what, there was a lot of devastation when they put it in. Yeah, but you, you never really needed it because the south, end, when you go south, yeah. You're going, this, the only thing south of New Bedford is the ocean, right? <laughs> it wasn't necessary to le- take out all those neighborhoods, hundreds and hundreds of homes, hundreds of people were relocated just to put in that highway that served uh, the bulkheads there down on the, on the south end. It, it really wasn't necessary. Well, you know, there's a picture in the book of two older gentlemen, and I think it says a couple of old timers are kind of looking over, yeah, the, over yeah. the area. And you see them with the hats and the, you know, yeah. and in the background, it's almost unrecognizable. It looks it, like Europe, yeah. It, 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 look, looks, it looks bombed like out a war zone. War, yeah, yeah. From, from basically New Bedford Hotel all the way down to the water is a big space of nothing. Yeah. I, I don't remember that. I mean, I know that happened in my lifetime, but yeah. I don't remember going down there well, then to see that. When people think about New Bedford, Moby Dick, right? They just did the marathon not that long ago. Um, obviously, you had the big premiere with Gregory Peck coming to the city and everything else. There's a picture was, in there. <laughs> oh, that was a big <laughs> that deal. Was a big, that must have been awesome. Yeah, they, they renamed it uh, Moby Dick's Herman Melville Square. Was, uh, oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, they had everything. They big had time. The, Her- the Herman Mel- the Moby Dick Express. They had, uh, they, it was like a, a period of, uh, you know, of great celebration where they renamed everything. Right. And they came out eventually with a postage stamp. They had... Uh, Oh, I can't remember all the different uh, souvenirs and things that they produced. You know, it was national exposure for New Bedford yeah. at a time when people really needed it. Um, so that was a big deal. And when Gregory Peck and John Houston came yeah. to town. Also, you touch on different uh, types of social issues. Obviously, the summer of 1970, civil unrest. Yeah. You have pictures there of the civil unrest that we had yeah. that summer. Uh, and it's interesting to see, you know, uh, what was happening and a lot of the leaders that were involved in this effort. Yeah, you know, it was a time uh, of you know, great uh, agitation and um, right. yeah, cons- civil rights concern. movement. You had uh, the Vietnam yeah. War protests and things like that. And Bedford was yeah. part of that. Anti-war protests going on. There were Black Panther uh, demonstrations. Uh, so all the groups of that period uh, who were so active nationwide, they were here in New Bedford, and they were and they influenced us, everybody here who was living in the area and you know that's what's like I say dynamic about New Bedford is that we really our history is uh, emblematic or exa- it's an, it's a you know it's it represents so much what our whole country has been through right, right from the very beginning well you uh, we were talking about the mayors before when you actually look at the mayors Howland okay Roch <laughs> right Roch Jones Duffhouse yeah. Uh, Rodney French, right? Was a mayor. Okay, Rodney yeah. French Boulevard. Mm-hmm. I bet people go up and down these streets, and it's Rodney French Boulevard, and it's the Rod Jones Duff House, but you know, and it's pe- Howland, pe- and, it, and, uh, and uh, obviously Ashley Boulevard, Charles Ashley. Yeah, Ashley. Oh, they don't even realize why the streets named what they're named, right? What is behind the names? You know? Right. That's right. That's the fascinating it, it's, part. It's not just you know that Ashley was this mayor, but uh, he was Mr. New Bedford for a. Th- a Half a century. Yeah, right, right. He, he represented the city. Now, you talked about uh, contributions of different people. I know that you touch a lot on music. There's a lot of different pictures of different groups that came out in New Bedford. Of course, yeah. Tavares, uh, the one, probably the biggest one that comes to mind. But there's a lot of other singing groups that came out in New Bedford. You get the pictures there. Yep. They played at Cushion Park. They played at Lincoln Park. Um, that's got to bring back a lot of memories from people that remember yeah, that. Yeah. Well, New Bedford was an important uh, stop in the whole circuit, the music circuit. You know, right. you had Providence, the Cape. And you had New Bedford right. and, and uh, Lincoln Park and a lot of the bands, the big bands uh, of the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, they stopped in New Bedford, like Duke Ellington, the Dorsey Brothers. Right. Um, they came here, and, and a lot of them picked up some of the musicians that were here and took them with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we wanted to, to spend a lot of time with that, but also uh, Al Sonia, who wrote most of the music history in this book, 
he took it back to the marching bands of the 1800s. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> wow. when the marching armies, when they marched yeah. hundreds of miles, they had bands. And, um, you know, so New Bedford played a role in, in, again, in our national musical history since the very beginning. And you talked about sports a little bit. We were talking about that as we were flipping through yeah. the book. Uh, Bobby Watkins, we had him here on the show a couple of years ago. Uh, obviously, that great career at New Bedford High School, then went to uh, Ohio State, eventually the Chicago Bears. Uh, there's a shot of Jimmy Connors, the great boxer. Yeah. Bedford was a big boxing city. Big time uh, boxing, You'd yeah. have a lot of boxing events in the city. There, there yeah. was actually, um, I didn't see it in the book, but wasn't there a place where there was boxing in the oh, sure. center of New Bedford? Oh, yeah. Well, well, of course, uh, we have pictures showing uh, the old Woodrow Wilson Hall. Uh, Woodrow Wilson Hall? Where, where yeah. is that? <laughs> uh, well, it's I never heard of it's it. in the South End. It's, yeah, uh, yeah on uh, Rodney French. Yeah. yeah, we talked about, too, the Hurricane Dyke. You know, obviously the Hurricane yeah. Dyke was put in uh, after uh, the 54 Hurricane, I believe, some years after that. And I think there's a picture there of... Um, you know, somebody driving down Cove Road, there's no dike. The water yeah. is coming up over the road. But every time a moon tide or st storm, uh, there would more be more erosion, and the water would come right down Orchard Street. Now, I, I can remember that. <laughs> uh, that's how old I am, right? <laughs> but but I, we lived on Rivet and Bolton, and uh -huh. I can remember during the 1960 hurricane, looking out the window across Ashley Park, and we could see the boats coming down Orchard yeah, Street. I know. And the, and the water had, had I've uh, heard that. Uh, filled up there. Yeah, it was all in the park, at the bottom of the park, and uh, the dugouts had been blown away, Treat the oak trees had been blown Great down. Job, Let me credit my authors. If Real you quick, got about yeah. 10 seconds. Well, Al Sonia, <laughs> Natalie White, Marsha McCabe, Jay, uh, Jay Avila. All right. A great group of, of people and really in-depth history here. Fantastic job again. Thanks for joining us here on your Beverly Connection, Thank Joe. Thank you for having me, Paul. All right, Joe Thomas, he's the publisher of Spinner Publications. The book is called A Picture History of New Bedford, Volume 2, 1925 to 1980. And like me, I've got to get Volume 1 now because after seeing Volume 2, i got to go back and get That's Volume right. 1, and you can get that one too. I'm Paul Sandals for New Bedford Connections. Thanks for watching. See you next time.